Hi, my name is Mate. In this video, I will walk you through how I implemented the sounds into Unity using Wise. You can watch the gameplay video on the link that I left in the description, but now let's have a look at the game. So John Lemon is a tutorial game that is available on the Unity website and it teaches you the basics of how to build a game. So first, in order to make Wise work with Unity, I had to make changes to the player movement script. I removed the M audio source lines and replaced them with the AK sound engine. In Wise, I created the footsteps switch container and I copied my wood footsteps and I placed them into the carpet random container. In here, I randomized the pitch of the sound and I applied a low pass filter and high pass filter and I also randomized the volume so it sounds more natural. Because I duplicated the sounds of the wood steps, I'm saving space in the game. Let's check it out. You will hear that these sounds are muffled comparing to the original wood step sounds. The kitchen and the bathroom has tiles. As the game level is set in an old house, I created creaks for the wood floor. So when John Lemon walks around on the level, you will hear these creaks from time to time. I created a good number of samples just to avoid repetition. Now in the game. So the way I created this in Ableton, I had these original wood step creak sounds. And then I applied an arpeggiator on it and automated the rate. So in Wise, in order not to hear these creak sounds all the time, I dragged the creak switch container into the footsteps event and I changed the probability down to 7. So this will allow the creak sounds not to be played very often. For Unity to know what to do with these sounds, and when to change them, I had to create a script for the surfaces. In the script, I clarified that I will use the audio kinetic sound engine and the footsteps event. So how does it look like in Wise? In order to make the switch container work, I had to create separate switches for the different kind of surfaces. Within the footsteps switch group, I have the carpet, tile and wood floor types. Then I had to tell Wise which sound to play when a certain switch is being called by the Unity game engine. So I go to footsteps, set the switch grip and I also set the wood floor to be my default sound and then just drag and drop into their respective boxes. In Unity I created box colliders for these different kind of surfaces but I only needed two for the tiles and the carpet as I had my wood floor as a default. On the box collider, I also added the AK switch and the AK trigger enter components, which are both part of the audio kinetic integration package. For Unity to know where exactly John Lemon is, I had to create a footstep position triggering box collider, which is attached to John Lemon's body, and then I just dragged and dropped onto the AK trigger enter component. I've also created the same components but with the AK trigger exit command so Unity will know exactly that it has to play the wood step sounds as we already set them as default in Wise. For this game the level music is being separated into two parts, the section A and the section B part.
When I exported these stems, you can see that I left an additional two bars in the end of these sections for the tail of the reverb to fade out nicely. I have set the exit cue marker to the point where I want my section to be repeated from. I've also added an extra bar in the beginning of the section so I can stick the level start stinger on the front. <laughs> After setting up the entry and the exit cue markers in the clip view within the interactive music layout, I build the following sequence in the music playlist editor to tell Wise what order I want my music to be played. <laughs> Let's just speed it up a bit. The yellow arrow indicates what section is being played at the moment, and when you see both of them, that means that the exit cue is being played from the previous section, and the entry cue has already started in the new one. For the section B part, I created two variations of the pizzicato strings. I wanted Wise to play them randomly, so when you right click on the track, you can create subtracks, therefore, more variations for your individual instruments. Let's check it out by hitting the F button on the track. <laughs> Boom. You now heard the first variation, let's check out the second. Not too much of a difference in this case, but this tool can create an incredible variation to your game music. The Level Music Playlist container is running into the Ambient Audio Bus, which I created within the Master Audio Bus, and I will tell you why I did that in the next chapter. There are two ways of finishing this game. One is getting caught by a ghost and the winning. I created a separate audio bus for these stingers, but I also part of the master audio bus. In this way, the auto ducking function becomes available, which is a very powerful and easy to use tool when you want your music to push down other sound effects or music in your game. In this specific case, I push down the ambient audio bus with my stinger audio bus. So when my stinger is being played in the game, it pushes down the ambient channel by 24 dB. In Unity, I created a box collider with an AK event component, and I just added an AK trigger collision enter command to it. Then I placed the box in the end of the level. The get caught stinger was a little bit more tricky. So I used the enemy's point of view prefab and I added the AK trigger collision enter and the AK event components. Then I just dragged and dropped John Lamon's prefab in the AK trigger collision enter box so the game knows when John Lamon walks into that area it has to play the get caught event. <laughs> Thank you.
Let me talk about a little bit how I created the sound effects for this game. Yes, I did record myself in the bathroom. So you probably have noticed that the further John Lemon walks away from the shower, the quieter the sound becomes. This was created with the use of the attenuation curves within Wise. With this tool you can easily simulate a game-like environment. So I use the same on the ghosts and on every object in the level. So let's check out how did I do these ghost sounds. I have a very basic operator instrument set up with a couple of extra effects. For example a vocoder, the LFO in the operator and two additional LFOs to change the pitch of the oscillator. Without these movements our sound is quite boring. So let's just turn them back one by one. And of course, these ghost patrolling sounds has an attenuation curve with only 4 meters or game units distance. I also created light flickering sounds. For that purpose I used Serum as my main instrument with loads of LFOs on it. And the gate tool to create these glitches. The gate's return value being automated by the random LFO. I recorded multiple instances of my flickering sound and I just dropped them in a random container. The attenuation curve that I used for the flickering sounds is slightly different than the others. Because the lights are placed on the wall, I activated the cone attenuation function to place my sound virtually on the wall so the sound doesn't go through on the other side of it. The attenuation preview helps you try your sound before you place it in the game engine. The dark grey area is the outer angle, which represents the wall itself and the light grey area, which is the inner angle, represents everything else. This video covers how I created and implemented my sounds into Unity using WISE. However, I only scratched the surface, so if you need help with your implementation, feel free to get in touch with me via email or down in the comments section. Thanks for watching.